friends, and welcome back to more Wednesday in the Word. I'm Rick Sanders. Not since the Civil Rights Movement of the 1960s has this nation been so preoccupied with the notion of social justice. It's not a new phenomenon. Men and women everywhere cry for justice. In fact, the notion of justice predates man, for justice is itself one of the character traits of God Almighty. An entire book in the, in the Bible is dedicated to not only a discussion of justice, but to a demand for it. We will look at that briefly in this session and see how closely it resembles 21st century America. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for your blessings once more for keeping us safe through another week. We take these few moments now and turn our hearts and minds to you. Please open our hearts to all that you would tell us. Help us to put into practice the things that you show us out of your word. By the help of your Holy Spirit, we pray. In Christ's name, amen. In the Old Testament, there's a little book called Amos. Amos was a prophet who lived around 750 BC. A simple herdsman, a farmer, who received the call of God and the unenviable task of confronting and denouncing Israel's sin to its face. Therefore, his book is full of anger, indignation, and even sorrow, for the very name Amos means burden. And his message has an eerie relevance for us today. Let's begin by looking at chapter 6, verses 3 through 6, as I read to you from the New King James Version. Woe to you who put far off the day of doom, who cause the seat of violence to come near, who lie on beds of ivory, stretch out on your couches, and eat lambs from the flock, and calves from the midst of the stall, who sing idly to the sound of stringed instruments, and invent for yourselves musical instruments like David, who drink wine from bowls, and anoint yourselves with the best ointments, but you are not grieved for the affliction of Joseph. Israel, like America, was preoccupied with its comfort in many ways. It was preoccupied with relaxation to the point of laziness, with rich food to the point of gluttony, with entertainment, yes, even religious entertainment, with alcohol, thinking it was sophisticated and obsessed with personal attractiveness and appearance. In short, an excessive, decadent lifestyle which ignored the oppressed and the poor. And worst of all, the situation did not grieve them. They did not mourn over it as Amos did. Look now at chapter 8, verses 11 and 12. Behold, the days are coming says the Lord God, that I will send a famine on the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. They shall wander from sea to sea and from north to east. They shall run to and fro, seeking the word of the Lord, but shall not find it. This luxurious, uncaring lifestyle caused these people to be deaf to the words of God and deaf to the cries of the poor. It was not so much a famine of the word of God, it was there, as evidenced by Amos himself. No, it was a famine of hearing the word of God. They didn't really want to hear it, because they had no intention of letting it interfere with their excessive and unjust lifestyle. Look now at chapter 7, verses 7 and 8. Thus God showed me, behold, the Lord stood on a wall made with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand, and the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. Then he said, Behold, I'm setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will not pass by them anymore. Oddly enough, our pastor preached a sermon about plumb lines recently. A plumb line is a simple and ancient tool by which you can determine if a wall is straight or crooked. Well, obviously, God's word is his plumb line, his absolute, unchanging moral standard 
by which we can determine if our behavior and intentions are straight or crooked. When there is the introduction of objective truth, there will always be separation and the making of distinctions, whether it be between a straight wall or a crooked, or whether it be between a straight behavior on my part or crooked. Why, even a judge in a dog show makes distinctions. How much more important when the soul of a nation is at stake? Chapter 5, verse 24, our last and most important verse. The theme of Amos. But let justice run down like water and righteousness like a mighty stream. This is the passionate response to a sinful apathy. The key message from Amos, he emphasizes judgment or justice toward others, social justice, and righteousness toward God in a personal way. God is both just and merciful, and he cares passionately about injustice, racism, avarice, and cruelty. Many of us fear we may be facing a national judgment for our many sins. But on an everyday basis, and more eminently, we each face a personal judgment of our own. How we need to seek the mercy of God, and how we need to show mercy to our neighbors. Amos in the end tells us many things. He tells us that cheap grace is an illusion. That God cares for the poor and hates any system that treats them unjustly. That he, God will always warn before he judges and punishes. And most of all, past blessings are no guarantee of God's present approval. Well, then what can you and I do in the face of injustice? Here are some ideas. First of all, we as Christians can intercede seriously in prayer for the needs of our nation. We can also stand against decadence and excess by living a more simple lifestyle. We can stand against and refuse to participate in violence, racism, lawlessness, vandalism, and foolishness of all kinds. We can give to the poor and even more we can volunteer to help those less fortunate than ourselves. In 1956, then-Senator John F. Kennedy won the Pulitzer Prize for his little book called Profiles in Courage. In this book, he outlined stories of many United States senators who took a courageous stand in the face of opposition and ridicule. For these men, civic virtue was more important than political expediency, even more important than their political party. If we, like them, are to have the courage of our convictions, we will need God's Holy Spirit in this chaotic time to give us both compassion and backbone. As Amos himself summarized it, hate evil and love what is good. Turn your courts into true halls of justice, perhaps even yet, the Lord God of heaven's armies will have mercy on the remnant of his people. Perhaps yet, God will have mercy. Perhaps yet. Let's pray. Lord, how desperately we need your mercy in our nation to heal our wounds and to forgive our many and dreadful sins. Have mercy on us, our leaders our military and policemen, our medical people, and the people of God in this nation, that they may repent, seek your face, and be a godly example in this godless culture. Have mercy upon us and deliver us from war, violence, from sin, from plague, from calamity of all sorts. We ask this in the strong name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, friends, for joining us once more. I'll see you next week again for Wednesday in the Word. Until that time, God bless you. So long.